Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to crochet this open neck cardigan for a girl from one years old uh, up to six years old. I have a few cardigans already made to show you. Okay, so this is a two to three years old, as you can see. And the pattern right here is a two row repeat. It is really quite easy. Once you get used to it, it just keeps going really really quickly okay so we have an open front right here a small collar at the top we have a ribbing at the end of the sleeves like this and we have nice widening at the bottom of the cardigan okay so this is how it looks from the front and this is the back right here very very simple but i think that is what i like about this cardigan now one thing that i have done for this one just because it is quite simple i have made a scarf to go with it uh, i believe you have probably seen the picture of it uh, in the beginning uh, of this video so as if now i am not planning to do the scarf but if somebody would like to make one of one of these to match your cardigan uh, let me know in the comments and i'm sure i'm gonna find some time to do one okay so enough about this so this is size two to three years like this next one i have is a size three to four years so slightly bigger everything exactly the same just a little bit wider a little bit longer and here we go okay three to four and this is the biggest size that i have this is a size five to six years really quite big but uh, as you can see exactly the same nice at the bottom the same sleeves everything the same now if i got you interested into making one of these together with me let's go on and have a look of what we are going to need now one thing that i want to mention right now is that um, I forgot to mention that we are going to actually need seven stitch markers. I mentioned later on that we need five. We actually need seven, okay? Um, just so I got a little confused and I cannot go back and uh, redo it. So make sure you have seven stitch markers. Okay, now let's go on and have a look of what we are going to need. So to make this cardigan, we are going to need five buttons. I'm going to use these wooden flower buttons. Five stitch markers or the same number as you have buttons, but you, you're going to need uh, four as a minimum. Then a needle, a measuring tape in centimeters because uh, my chart is in centimeters. Scissors, a hook that matches your uh, yarn's weight. So I have a four millimeter hook and my yarn. So I will be using Stylecraft's uh, special double knit yarn. So this is number three or a uh, lightweight yarn. Uh, there is approximately 295 meters in a 100 gram skein. Now you don't have to use the same yarn, just pick something uh, similar in perhaps in length uh, and whatever colors you want. This color is a duck egg color. It's beautiful. Okay, so how much yarn you're going to need? Uh, these are approximate. This is uh, what I have figured out after I made my cardigans. So from 12 months to 3 years, you're going to need approximately 250 to 300 grams. So I have three skeins, so this is 300 grams of yarn. This is definitely going to be enough as I will be making size uh, 1 to 1.5 years. Then 3 to six years, you're going to need approximately 300, 350 to 400 uh, grams of yarn. So I would have an extra skein uh, just to make those bigger uh, sizes. I'm gonna quickly show you my chart. <coughs> this is what I will be using. You can have a look right here, or if you need a better look, I will have this posted on my Facebook page, uh, so you will be able to see a good picture of it. We will go through these once we need them. Okay, so for now that is it and we can get started. Okay, so to start, grab your yarn, have four stitch markers ready, 
you need measuring tape and your hook now. Okay, let's quickly have a look at this. So this is my chart. The big numbers right here are the chains. So we'll have to figure out which number of these chains is going to be closest to the length around the neck that we need for this cardigan. Now I will be making a size one to one and a half years. So I need my starting chain to be approximately 35 centimeters long or it could be a little bit shorter. You don't really want to make this longer than that. Otherwise the opening will be very big. So uh, around there, okay? So it could can be a little bit shorter. Now I will be chaining, let's say I'll chain 47 and I will measure the length of that chain and if it is uh, close to 35 centimeters I'm going to stick with this. If it's not enough I will go for the a bigger number of chains and then measure again. Okay, let us see. So 35 centimeters in length for me. I'm gonna make a slip knot and I'm going to start chaining. I will chain 47 chains first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, and I will keep going until I have 47 chains and so I have chained 47 and now I'm going to measure if this measures 35 centimeters for me because I need this length so put your measuring tape then put your first chain at the beginning of it and give it a little pull. So I'm approximately at about 32-33 centimeters. It's a little bit short. So I will try 53 chains. So 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53 chains. Again, I'm gonna measure and with a little bit of pull, I am right at 35 centimeters. So if I don't really pull, I'm about 33, but you need to pull it a little bit. And uh, so if I go for 59, I will be over this measurement and I do not want that. So I will stick to 53 chains. Now this is how you figure out how long your starting chain should be. You just look at the length that you need, whichever size that you are making, and then you figure out which of these numbers of chains is the length that you need for it. Okay. Again, I'm going to have this on my Facebook page if you need a better look. Now, once we figured out which one we have, so I have this one, you're going to look at the numbers underneath the number of your starting chain. So the very first row is a very easy one. So we are going to add an extra chain. This is the same for everybody. So chain one and start making your single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So skip the first one into the second one and start making single crochet. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and keep going with one single crochet to the end of your chain. Once we have made all the single crochets. Now we are going to put our stitch markers in the stitches. We have the numbers written here. So in stitch number seven, in stitch number 19, stitch number 35 and stitch number 47 for me. Now you look at the number of chains that you have um, chained and look at the numbers underneath that. Okay, so I chained 53, so first one is at stitch number 7, whichever side you are going to count that from, it does not matter. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'm going to mark number 7, then it is 19 for me, so 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Then it is 35 for me, so finish 19 here, 19, so 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Mark that. And then it is 47 for me, so 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 
40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47. Now, there is another little number at the very, very back here. So you have 6, 6, 8, 8, or 10, and 10. This is just to make sure that after the last stitch marker, you have this number of stitches left, just to make sure that we have counted everything correctly. So I need 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. Okay, so have another good look if you need that. Like this. And we're done. We can start on our repeat row number one. Now, repeat row number one is quite easy. To start this row, you're going to chain one and turn. You will make a single crochet into the very, very first stitch. So this one right here. So single crochet and chain one. Now, once you chain one, you're going to skip a stitch underneath. Go into the next one. Again, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch into the next one, single crochet, chain one. And you keep going doing like this until you get to your stitch marker. Now, as we have chained one right here, we should have one stitch to skip before the stitch marker. I'm going to take the stitch marker out and this is where our corners are going to be. So you get to skip one stitch. And in the stitch that was marked, we're going to make a single crochet, chain two, one, two, and single crochet back into that same stitch. I'm going to mark that chain two space again. After you make a single crochet, after you finish your corners, you're going to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip, single chain, skip, single chain, and you will keep doing that until <coughs> you get to your stitch marker. Now again, you should have a chain one, skip a stitch, and then you should have your stitch marker. I'm going to take the stitch marker out and into that stitch, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet back into that same stitch. Mark that chain two space. You finish a corner, you're gonna chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip, single chain, skip, single chain and you will keep going until you hit your first uh, third excuse me stitch marker chain one and you should have one stitch to skip before the stitch marker stitch marker out single crochet chain two and single crochet back into that same stitch. Chain one, skip, single chain, skip and keep going until you get to your fourth stitch marker. Again, you get to chain one, skip a stitch where your chain marker, uh, when your marker is, you're going to put a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip, single crochet, chain one, and at the end of this row, you should uh, you should have skip a stitch and a single crochet into the very last stitch. And this is how your work should look like. Okay, so next. So this is going now to be repeat row number two. Now remember, 
uh, how we start, finish and what we do at the corners. So to start uh, the next row you're going to chain one and you're going to turn. You're going to make a double crochet back into that very very first single crochet into the very first stitch right here and now we're going to start making clusters. So you're gonna yarn over and you will make a cluster of three double crochets in the very first chain one space. So yarn over, go into that stitch, pull your yarn out, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two and stop. Again yarn over, go back into that same space, pull your yarn out, yarn over, pull through two loops. One more, yarn over, go in there for the third time, pull your yarn out, yarn over, pull through two loops, and now you should have, when, once you have four loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over, pull through all loops, and chain one. So this is your cluster. Then you're going to find the next chain one space, and again a cluster of three double crochets. I have four loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all four, chain one. Then I have one more before my corner, again a cluster, one, two, three, yarn over, pull through all loops, chain one. Take the stitch marker out, now we are going to make a corner. So you're going to yarn over, make a cluster in that corner. So one, <coughs> two and three, pull through all loops and chain two. One, two. Now you want to make another cluster into the same chain two space where the corner is. So yarn over and one, two, and three, pull through all loops, chain one. You want to mark that chain two space in between those two clusters. And then you keep going, making clusters into each chain one space, just one cluster. and chain one into the next chain one space and chain one so keep going until you get to the space with your stitch marker once you get to your corner You're going to make a cluster chain two, one, two, and another cluster in back into that same chain two space. Chain one and mark your chain two space at the corner and then keep going with one cluster into each chain one space and one chain after so cluster and chain one and into the next chain space now you want to keep going like this for the whole row every time you get into that chain two space with a stitch marker you make two clusters with chain two in between them and just keep going and I will see you at close to the end of this row okay so this is what we're going to do at the end of the repeat row two or at the row with the clusters so I have one chain one space left I am going to make my cluster one two and three, oh, two and three. 
Now I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all the loops and I am not going to chain one. So you don't want to chain one after the very last um, cluster. So what we're gonna do instead of that chain, we're gonna yarn over and make a double crochet into the very, very last stitch. So we, at the very end, we have a double crochet instead of a chain one. If you make a, a chain one right here, you're gonna have a hole in the very, very edge right here. So we want to have it nice and tight. So don't chain after the last one. Okay, so we have made our two repeat rows. Now I'm gonna show it one more time because our first repeat row is going to, be, to look slightly different uh, this time. So what you want to do is you want to chain one and turn. Now remember this row, again, this is going to be repeating all the time from now on. So chain one, make a single crochet back into that very, very first stitch. So single crochet. Now you're gonna chain one, you're gonna skip the cluster, and you're gonna put a single crochet in between the two clusters. So single crochet, and chain one. Again, the next chain one space in between the clusters, single crochet, chain one. So again right here, single crochet and chain one. Now once you get to your stitch marker, you are going to take this out and into that chain two space you make a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. Mark that chain two space. And then again you start with a chain one. So you're chaining one when you are going over a cluster. And then a single crochet in between them. Chain one because I'm going over the cluster and single crochet in between chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And you keep going until you come to your next stitch marker. Again, take that out into the chain two space, single crochet, chain two, single crochet back in there. Mark your stitch. After that we have a cluster right here so we chain one, single crochet, chain one and you keep going until you come to the end. Every time you come to a stitch marker you take that out, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, stitch marker back into the chain two space. So keep going, I'm gonna see you at the end of this row. Okay, so I'm coming to an end. I have two clusters left right here. So I single crochet, chained one, then single crochet, chain one, and make a single crochet at the very, very, very last stitch that is at your edge. So single crochet. So it looks like this. Now again we have uh, a ro repeat row two. I'm just gonna quickly go over it. So you're gonna chain one, turn around, double crochet back into that very first stitch, into the chain one space. You're gonna make your cluster. And chain one. chain one, chain one, and then once you get to the corner, stitch marker out, cluster into that chain two space, so one, two, and three, pull through, chain two, one, two, and make another cluster 
back into that same chain 2 space. Pull through, chain 1. Stitch marker back into that chain 2 space. And then keep going making clusters into each chain 1 uh, space in between your stitch markers. And keep going. Every stitch marker gets a corner of two clusters and chain two in between them. So keep going and I will see you at the end. And I have one more chain, uh, one space left in the cluster row. So the very last cluster. Pull through and remember after the last cluster we do not chain one, we go straight into the very last stitch and make a double crochet. Then again, you're going to chain one, turn single crochet back into that very first stitch, and then chain one, single crochet in between the clusters. Chain one, single crochet, and you will keep going until you come to the stitch marker. Stitch marker out single crochet, chain 2, single crochet. Stitch marker back in, chain 1, single crochet, chain 1. Okay, so at this point you just need to keep going until your uh, yoke is long enough and wide enough uh, for everything. Now I'm gonna go away quickly and make my yoke and I will show you what to measure and how to know that you are ready to connect it. So this is how the pattern looks like. It's really pretty. I think it is quite easy to remember. Uh, and by the way, to those who perhaps are not crocheting a whole lot of cardigans, especially with the top, do uh, top down, uh, you will find that the number of your clusters is increasing every time. That is okay, that is correct, that is why we're making the two clusters in the corners right here and it is uh, supposed to be like that. That is how it gets uh, wider and bigger. Okay, uh, so give me two seconds and I will be back with my yoke finished. Okay, so my yoke is done right now. Okay, let us have a look. So first thing that you want when you're measuring yoke, you want your last row to be clusters. Cluster row, row, row number two of our uh, repeat rows. Okay, because we want to connect at the same row. Now, right here, we're gonna look up the yoke. So for the size that I'm making, I'm making it for one to one and a half years it is approximately 13 centimeters. So you want to measure a corner from the top to your stitch marker, okay? And you want to be either a little bit short to that, you can be a, approximately a, a half of a centimeter short to the measurement that you need. You, you can be at uh, the exact measurement or a little bit over. So if you have a look at mine, I am over that. I am approximately nearly 14 centimeters in length. That is no problem. It is just a little bit more difficult to be on point uh, because we have to be on uh, on exact row, okay? Because this has to be a um, a cluster row because the row before was at about 11 centimeters, 11 and a half centimeters in length, that was too short, and then the next one I did is a little bit over. That is no problem at all. Uh, that is That will just mean that I'm gonna have to do uh, at least one decrease on the sleeves, but that is no problem, I will explain all that. So you want to be a little bit short at the point of your yoke length, or a little bit over, that is no problem at all. Okay, so once you know that this is long enough for you, what you want to do is you want to measure your chest circumference. Let us have a look. Now, this is the chest right here, and if you look up whichever one you need, so I have 56 right here, so 56 is a full circumference. As our yoke is not connected yet, we can only measure the back part, so that is a half of my 
chest measurement. So I have a slash there and a smaller number that is an exact half of the full circumference. So 28 centimeters for me. If you're making bigger, you obviously you're going to look at your numbers. So 28 centimeters for me. So I'm not going to pull on it. I'm just going to lay it down flat like this. And I'm going to measure from one stitch marker to another. Okay. And I'm approximately 24 and a half centimeters in length. I need this to be 20. No, I am at 25. So just like that. So 25 centimeters. I need this to be 28. So I'm three centimeters short for the uh, full um, for my uh, chest measurement. Okay. So now I have to figure out how many chains is going to cover that length that is missing for me. So I'm just gonna flip it to the side like here and I can see my stitches. I'm gonna put it close. So this stitch I'm gonna put at the beginning of it and I'm gonna count how many stitches fit into those three centimeters that I'm missing. So one, two, three, four, five stitches. And one more thing, it has to be an odd number, otherwise it will be hard for our sleeves. So one, two, three, four, five stitches that fit into the three centimeters that I'm missing for the chest circumference. Now you might be missing less, you might be uh, missing more, just whatever you count your stitches and then make it an odd number. As a minimum, you have to have one chain underneath each armhole. That is uh, absolutely necessary. Okay, so now I know uh, this is good. This is missing three centimeters. I've counted out that I need five chains underneath each armhole to make up for that missing length. Now we can get on to connecting. Okay, so we're making repeat row one now. So we're gonna chain one and it starts as usual. Single crochet, chain one. Single crochet, chain one. And keep going until you come to your first stitch marker. Chain one. Now the next is my chain two space with a stitch marker. I'm gonna put in my single crochet. Then I'm going to chain those five chains that I have counted out the missing length. So one, two, three, four and five. One, two, three, four, five. Now again, you might have less than me. Whatever you need, you just uh, chain that. Then you're gonna find the next stitch marker and put a single crochet in there. And then again, keep going with your um, pattern. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and you just need to finish off your back and I will see you at the next stitch marker. My next stitch marker, again, I'm going to single crochet. I'm gonna, uh, gonna uh, make the same amount of chains as I did on the other side, that is very important. One, two, three, four, five. Find your next stitch marker and put a single crochet in that chain two space, chain one, and finish off this row as usual. At this point we have connected our yoke. Now I want to show you what to do with uh, the chain, with the chains underneath the armhole. Uh, so from now on our rows start and finish the same as we have done before. The only difference is that we do not have corners anymore. Now it's just going to be um, straight down. So start your next row with the clusters and I'm going to see you uh, right here where the... Okay, so I am at my chains 
right now. So what you want to do is you are going to skip one stitch, find your next chain. So this is a single crochet, so I skip that, find next chain and make a cluster. So this is a really small one for me. No worries. One, two, and three. Chain one. You want to skip a chain and into the next one you want to make another cluster. So it uh, depends on how many chains you had to do underneath your armhole. So I had to do five, so I'm going to have extra three um, clusters underneath. If, if you made three chains, you're going to have two clusters. If you had a chain one, you're going to have one extra uh, cluster underneath your armhole. So you just keep skipping one stitch and um, keep making those clusters. So I'm going to skip that chain, make another cluster, chain one and after the, you have used up all your chains you're gonna find your next chain space and just keep going as the pattern that we have crocheted before and you want to do exactly the same thing underneath the other armhole so I'm gonna have exactly the same right here because I have the same number of stitches. Now for the next um, two or three rows you you just want to keep making your uh, two rows of repeat. Now I am going to make an one decrease a little bit closer to the waist okay as I'm making a small size this might be quite close uh, to that. Now let's see so back neck to waist is for where we want to keep going right here until we start the bottom, the, the skirt part. Okay, and the length is for me 20.7 centimeters. Now I'm just looking at how many, uh, approximately how many rows I'm gonna have in there. So you measure that from the top of your shoulder. Okay, so I'm at 16 centimeters now, so I want to be at approximately 20 and a half. So I'm probably gonna fit in another row of clusters here and the third row. So on the third row I will make my decreases. You don't have to do them but they will make that nice little uh, shape. So I would say let's meet on the third row of clusters under we uh, under where we have started uh, connected our yoke and we can do those decreases together. So for now on, just keep doing the pattern and I will see you very, very soon. Okay, so I have started the third row of clusters after connecting the yoke. So one, two, and three. Now I want to do some decreasing to get a nicer shape. So what you want to do, you want to crochet yourself with the clusters until you get to the first armhole. You're going to find two chain one spaces underneath as much as you can uh, in the middle. So, you know, I don't have two that are exactly under, so I'm just choosing the these two. They just have to be on on the side right here. So when you have your yoke like like this, you have we want to find two that are closest to the very very side. So if you put it like this, you find yeah one two, and then one two at the other side. Okay, so once you get to those two chain one spaces, we are gonna crochet two clusters together. Now we're gonna yarn over, go into the first chain one space that you want um, to use for decreasing. I'm gonna go one, one more, two double crochets that are not finished. I'm gonna yarn over, go into the next chain one space, one and another one, two double crochets that are not finished. So I have two double crochets crocheted halfway in one chain one space and two double crochets crocheted halfway in the second um, chain one space. So now I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all loops. I'm gonna chain one and now I will keep going as usual until I get 
to my other armhole and we have to do the same under there so for now just keep going and I'm gonna see you somewhere around these two chain one spaces I am under my other underarm and again I have picked out two chain one spaces that I'm gonna crochet them together so one double crochet halfway through second double crochet halfway through yarn over into the next chain one space one double crochet halfway through and one more so you have four in total uh, double crochets halfway through you're gonna finish it off and chain one and finish off the row now when you're doing the next row you're gonna do your single crochets and uh, chain one once you're going to get to these to this place where you have your um, crochet together cluster you're gonna make a single crochet chain one and single crochet behind it and then just keep going right so at this point I am probably very close to my waist and I haven't measured I need to measure that okay so reminder back neck to waist for me it is 20.7 centimeters now the, the bigger the size that you're making the longer it needs to be so 20.7 for me and I am at almost 21 centimeters so I'm a little bit over and I still need to do another row because before starting our skirt we want the last row to be single crochet chain one single crochet chain one uh, because that way it is easier for us to connect the uh, the bottom beautifully so for now keep going I only have to finish this row and do an extra one and I will see you and we will start on the skirt so you might have extra uh, extra few more rows than me depending on the size but I am nearly there okay so I have crocheted my way down you can see from the top of the shoulder I'm approximately 21 and a little bit uh, a few millimeters over so it's a little bit longer than on my chart it doesn't matter it can be a little short a little long uh, just as as close as you can get to that measurement down to the waist now uh, you definitely want your very last uh, row to be single crochets and chain one now what I'm gonna do uh, so this is where you need your seven stitch markers okay so I forgot to say, I forgot that we are going to need seven. You are gonna put your um, cardigan together like this and you're gonna find that one space at the very very middle right here. It doesn't matter which one you choose as long as it is approximately at the very middle of the back okay because I have an even number of clusters I don't have that one chain one space that would be in the very middle so I just choose one that is approximately at the very very middle right here okay so from now on what we need to do we want to count out a few spaces to each side of that middle stitch right here so three that way and three that way um, as we're doing different sizes you might have more uh, spaces or chain one spaces in between your stitch markers because it's quite a small piece I'm gonna have them quite close to each other so I'm gonna first try I'm gonna do let's say five in between one two three four five chain spaces and I mark what number six one two th one two three four five six now that is too much I'm gonna end up with my third one really close right here I'm gonna swap for 14 one uh, spaces in between my stitch markers so one two three four stitch marker one two three four stitch marker and one two three four and a stitch marker that is absolutely fine you don't want this to be at the very very close to the front right here because it's gonna um, you're, you're not gonna have a nice and straight edge it's gonna 
kind of a bow like this. Now I'm gonna do the same the other way. One, two, three, four, five. I put my stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, and five. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six clusters on one side and one, two, three, four, five on the other side. Just because I didn't have a, uh, an odd number, it's a, a little bit different uh, different number of chain one spaces on both sides. doesn't matter. Once we do the increase, you will not be able to say that it is a, a few stitches one way or the other way. So you mark them out. <clears throat> Excuse me. You would try bigger spaces, smaller spaces, uh, and put them out so you are happy. Again, you don't want the last one to be too close to the edge. Now, once you have that done, we can start our bottom part of the cardigan. So you're going to chain one and start as usual. So double crochet and make your clusters into each chain one space until you get to your stitch marker. So keep going. I'm going to see you right here. Okay, so my next chain one space has the stitch marker. I'm going to take that out for now. And I'm going to make two clusters in that chain one space. So the first cluster, I'm going to chain one, not two, just one, so it doesn't leave a big hole. And the second cluster back into that same chain one space. And I'm going to chain one. Now I'm going to mark in between those two clusters. So that is an increase. So right here. Then in between my stitch markers, it is one cluster into each chain one space. Again, stitch marker, I'm going to take that out and make two clusters in there. Chain one. And another cluster, chain one. Mark in between those clusters. So keep going for this row. Everything in between the stitch markers get uh, one cluster where the stitch markers are you make two clusters so finish off this row and I'm gonna see you at the end right here okay so I have done an increase in every stitch marker and I have finished this row now we want to do at least three increases now I did three for uh, all of my cardigans for all of my sizes but if you would like the bottom part to be even wider you can do even four or even five you're just gonna need a little bit more yarn okay so this is one increase now we are going to start the next row again it is as usual until we get to the stitch marker so single crochet, chain one, and single crochets in between those clusters. Okay, so once you get to that stitch marker and that is in the middle of your increase, you're going to take that out. You're going to make a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet back into that same space in between your increase and stitch marker back in don't forget to chain one and then again a single crochet in between each cluster until you get to your next stitch marker 
stitch marker out, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet back into that same space, stitch marker back in, chain one, and continue as usual. So um, those spaces with stitch markers get a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. Everything is be in between is as usual. So finish off this row and we are going to start row two of increasing. Okay, so I'm coming close to my stitch marker. I have one more chain, spa chain space before. Make my cluster. Chain one, stitch marker out. And again, I'm gonna make two clusters in there. Chain one, and another cluster back into that chain two space. Chain one after that, stitch marker back in, and keep going with one cluster into each chain one space until your next stitch marker. Next stitch marker, again you do an increase. So finish off this row with increases on top of increases and I will see you at the end again. Okay, so two rows of increasing done for me. As you can see it's really starting to um, to bubble up or to wave right here because there's so many stitches here that need more space. Okay, so the next row again single crochet is chain one. Uh, business as usual until you get to your stitch markers in the stitch marker spaces. Double crochet, chain two, and double crochet. Mark the chain two. After that, chain one, single crochet in between each cluster. Again, stitch marker, take that out, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, stitch marker back in, chain one, and keep going. So every stitch marker gets a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. See you on a row three of increase right here. Now third time increasing is exactly the same as we have done before, so one cluster into each chain one space until the stitch marker. In the stitch marker we do two clusters with a chain one in between them. Chain one and a cluster. Now as it is my last row of increasing, I am not going to put my stitch marker back in because these just become normal stitches because I don't want to do any more increasing and I'm just going to have single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one and keep on going. So I have, as you can see, one, two and three. So you want to do that uh, for the third time. If you want to do it more times, again, you're going to have to mark that space space and do exactly as the same as you have done before. But for now we just finish off the third row of increasing at the bottom of our cardigan. And so I am finished with my increasing, so one, two, three rows. After that it is just the pattern as usual. I'm not gonna do anything more to it. I now only need to get the length for my cardigan. Uh, so if you look 
closely now you can see that our cardigan looks a little bit like a zigzag right now okay because we did those increases they kind of uh, make a point right here now that will disappear in the next few rows because we're not gonna do any more increasing it is just gonna straighten out so don't worry I just wanted to show you that when you're making your single crochet chain one uh, row now after you finish your increasing in between your increases you just make a single crochet chain one and then keep on going so you don't make an extra anything extra in there now like I said it is just a simple pattern okay so let's have a look now it's going to get much much wider in the next few rows uh, it hasn't quite yet fully extended right here okay now we need to get keep going until we get the length let's talk about that now there's no such actual thing as a full length you just kind of a crochet for as long as you want uh, you know lengthwise but I have this thing that I like to do so I like to crochet the same amount of rows as I crocheted down to the waist so let's let's just count so one two three four five six seven eight nine rows of clusters right here so and this is the waist so I'm gonna do nine rows of clusters here plus an extra two or three rows depending uh, I will just have a look once I'm a crochet I'm just gonna have a look of what I like so nine right here to the middle and then nine plus two that would be about 11 12 rows with uh, with clusters down to the bottom okay so this will be the end of part one one more thing that I wanted to say so I'm going to finish the bottom is going to be just the row of clusters I'm not gonna do anything else to it it's gonna be nice straight and neat so keep going I will see you in the next part and if you didn't quite understand what I was saying about the rows right here of how many I'm going to crochet um, it will probably be easier to show me once I have it done for now Keep going. I'll see you in the next one. Best of luck and bye.